Good morning, Pelham Road. My name is John, and I'm here with my friend Sam, and we're going to try to bring you a little inspiration this morning. Uh, this morning, we're talking about someone who wrote a lot of hymns that are in our hymnal. All right, we're going to be talking about the work of Fanny Crosby. So, Sam, I'll turn it over to you. Now. <laughs> when when you said Fanny Crosby, uh, I, I knew we had a lot of hymns in our hymnal by her, mm -hmm. and so I looked them up. There's 15. Okay. I'm going to tell it to you real quick. All right. Because um, you, you'll be surprised, I think. Uh, to God be the glory. Um, praise Him. Praise Him. Not the Andre Crouch uh, version, but... <laughs> <laughs> tell me the stories of Jesus. Uh, Jesus, keep me near the cross. Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it. Okay. We have two tunes. Uh, redeemed, how I love to proclaim it. And then, redeemed, how I love to proclaim it. Both yep. tunes in our hymnal. Um, I am thine, O Lord. Um, Lord, here am I. That's the master, master thou callest. I humbly obey. Mm -hmm. That's an old hymn. An old hymn. Um, my Savior, first of all, which I don't even know that <laughs> one. Um, rescue the perishing. Care uh, of the dying. Uh, yes. Uh, Jesus is tenderly calling me home. Blessed assurance, he hideth my soul all the way my Savior leads me and close to thee. Mm. Those are the ones that are, are in yeah. Okay. Um, I'll give some history. All right. Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> Wikipedia history of Fanny Crosby. That's right. And this is really short. There's a lot, a lot about yeah, her. Yeah, there is. But Frances Jane Van Alstyne is her name. Really? But she was known as Fanny Crosby. Okay. Born March 24th, 1820 and died February 12th, 1915. Okay. She's, like I said, she's more commonly known as Fanny Crosby. She was an American missionary, a poet, a lyricist and composer. She was a prolific hymn writer. She wrote more than 8,000 hymns. 8,000 hymns? Yes. Gracious. And gospel songs, and more than 100 million copies were printed wow. of her songs. Um, she's also known for her teaching and her rescue mission work. By the end of the 19th century, she was a household name. Um, she was known as the queen of gospel song writers and as the mother of modern congregational singing in America. Huh. I did not know that. What year, I mean, where was she born as? I remember the year. Um, you know, I don't know. She lived in New York City most oh, of the time. Most, okay, all right. Um, uh, a lot of the American hymnals contained her work. Her gospel songs were typical examples of, of the revival music of that time. Mm -hmm. If you remember a uh, movie. Revival, yeah. the Moody Revivals. Right. So she was real popular mm -hmm. um, during the Moody Revivals. And her best known songs were uh, Jesus is Tenderly Calling Me Home, Praise Him, Praise Him, and To God Be the Glory. Okay. Yeah. Um, some publishers were hesitant to have so many of her hymns by one person in their hymnal that she started using 200 different pseudonyms. Really? I did not know that. During her lifetime. So that her hymns could be published. That's, that's smart. Really. Yeah, it is. Yeah. She wrote more than a thousand secular poems. She had four books of po poetry published, and two of those were best-selling autobiographies. Wow. Um, additionally, she wrote a popular um, political and patriotic songs, at least five cantatas on biblical and patriotic themes, and the first secular cantata by an American composer. Wow. She was a committed Christian to rescue missions and was known for her public speaking. She was inspired by Stephen Foster. Oh, okay. Isn't that interesting? That is interesting. <clears throat> and typically she was paid one to two dollars per song. Wow. <laughs> how, how things have changed. <laughs> really? really. Uh, when it comes to her political uh, songs, I found this interesting. In 1840, she was an ardent Democrat and wrote against the wing candidate. But by 1852, she switched her political party allegiance to the pro, from the pro-slavery Democrats to the anti-slavery Whigs. Huh. So um, she supported Abraham Lincoln and the new Republican Party. Wow. That's pretty interesting. Now you have a little tune you can play for? I do. I'll right. tell you just a few more Oh, you some more, more information. Yes. Okay, I did not know. Not, not very much more. Okay, that's all right. She always began her the people have all morning. <clears throat> they, they just turn this devotion on and they just listen to it all morning. Right. <laughs> she always began her writing process with a word of prayer, and she wrote from six to seven hymns each day. One time she wrote 40 hymns in a day. Wow. Um, 
She had to have her work transcribed because she could barely write her name. Huh. That's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. And she didn't compose many of the melodies that she had. In 1921, the author of the Dictionary of Hymnody said that her hymns were very weak and poor. They were crudely sentimental and gushy. <laughs> Today, we would say they describe the deep longings of the human heart and they have stood the test of time. Mm -hmm. One little P.S. There you go. She lived decades in Hell's Kitchen in New York City, which is where Metro Baptist Church is, where we partner often in mission work. That's right. Um, that's interesting. That was interesting. Um, she, had, uh, she really worked um, for the needs of immigrants and the poor. Uh, her quote was, open, open your hand wide to those in need. Um, she lived in a dismal flat in New York City in, in one of the worst slums in New York City. Wow. On purpose. Um, so yeah. she, she was a good organizer. She would organize concerts and symphonies in New York City and would give half of the proceeds to the boy. Now you never so her life. Well, you never mentioned her family. And if you tell me that she had a family and raised children and did all that, I'm going to be amazed. I think she did. I, I, <laughs> there was so much to read, I stopped. All right. So you can Google. You can Google her. Okay. Name well, play a little piece of hers. Um, have you got one right there? Yeah, well, I got a bad one right here. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> really? <laughs> we'll talk about it. For okay, a okay, we'll talk uh, about it. So this was one. This is one that she used in revival. That was popular in revivals at that time. Okay. I will tell you, it is not in our Baptist hymnal today. Mm -hmm. I will tell you, it was in the old 1956 Baptist hymnal. Okay. And then you tell us why. Okay, all right, I can and tell it, you. Uh, I, like, name that tune. You can tell me what it is. That's it. I know what it is. That, that's Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior. Right. Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior. In my first congregation, uh, the uh, pianist uh, was a devout, loving woman, much like you just described Fanny Crosby. And she came to me, and in those days, the minister of a church that size did all the worship planning as well. Thankfully, I had you to do that here. But she turned to me and she said, now preacher, there, there are two hymns that are, that are rather popular with the people but I will not play them. And I would suggest that you avoid the awkwardness of calling on me to play them. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, tell me, Marie, what, what are they? She said, well, one of them is, brethren, we have met to worship. Mm -hmm. I hate that second verse. Let the sisters pray. We can do a lot more than pray, Brother John. We can do a lot more than pray. And then the second one was, pass me not, O gentle Satan. She said, who ever heard of such a God who would pick some and not pick others? I cannot imagine that the Savior would pass any of us by, so let's not do that. And the, the redeeming thing about all, all of us is that we grow. You know, she writes, Pass Me Not, O General Savior, which is highly Calvinistic. It's the worst game of duck, duck, goose ever. It is if God is choosing some, passing others, passing others, passing others, choosing some. But then later in her life, Fanny Crosby writes something like, Jesus is tenderly calling me home, which is an invitation for God is coming for all of us and inviting all of us home. The prodigal son story. That is the prodigal yeah. story. And so even her theology evolved over time. And it's, you get a snapshot of what we would call less than stellar theology, but you get also snapshots of better theology as she aged. Uh, and yet she influences us highly. And now that I know more about her, I'm actually more interested. I'll go home and uh, Google her and look up more. Good. Well, thank you for joining us this morning. Hopefully you found a little inspiration in the life and the story of Fanny Crosby.